Do you want to know more about detailing and weathering locomotives? Why don't you stick around and watch this segment and see how we do it on my in-scale model road, the Sayerhurst Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back to the Locomotive Shop. So this time on the Locomotive Shop, we're going to be working with the GP15-1. Um, so I know we have featured it before, number 1645. Uh, we installed the initial decoder in it. Um, however, I made some upgrades to them, and uh, now we're going to sit down. We're going to weather them. Uh, I have two more additional units now. So I'm going to sit down, we'll, sh we'll show you the detail work that I do and the weathering, and I'll go over briefly the uh, de decoder installs. Now we're not actually going to do the decoder installs because they're already done for me. Um, I was having problems with these units, and I spoke with my friend Ben, and he said, you know, send them out to him and see what he could do. And uh, lo and behold, he came back with some beautiful ESU um, Sound, uh, sound decoders installed in them and he also put some capacitors in them so that they run a little smoother and the fin overall finished product is really good so I figured let's finish it off with a good weathering job and a little detail work and these units will be uh, perfect to add to the roster. So briefly just to let you know uh, the GP15-1 was produced by the Electromotive Division between 1976 and 1983. It was a 1500 horsepower unit with the 645 uh, prime mover in it um, they were also nicknamed the baby tunnel motors and that was because the area um, on the back end of the locomotive had that see-through effect just like the SD45-2 uh, T's so uh, that's why they got the name baby tunnel motors okay so uh, let's head over to the workbench get to work uh, I'm gonna try in this video I know I've got some requests in the past to try to do more of an overhead view down uh, because I know in previous videos my big hands have gotten in the way so we're, we're gonna try it this time see how it works out and uh, all right let's get to work okay so here's our units for today um, number 1656 number 1660 and number 1645 which is the original so um, we're gonna be doing a little detail work but first I want to just show you uh, open them up because we gotta get the shells off anyway so I can show you what's going on underneath. Okay, so here's the chassis. It's an Atlas train man. So it's kind of a, a older style design. They haven't updated these yet. They run okay, um, but with the addition of the ESU uh, Loke Sound uh, decoder, it runs much smoother. Um, Ben did all this work, he did a tremendous job, uh, really made it neat. So this way it gives you an idea of what you're looking at if you want to do that with this uh, locomotive. Um, here's the capacitors that he added. He kind of puts them together himself. Um, it, it does work out. I mean, it's not like a keep alive circuit like uh, the HO scalers are used to, but it does make the unit run a little better. And this is where the speaker is mounted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these because the decoders are already programmed and they run really well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and separate the shells out and uh, keep them all uh, organized so I don't mix up the units and I know which ones are which. Okay, so I've got all the shells separated out. Um, what I did is I took just a piece of tape and labeled which chassis is which number so they don't get all mixed up. Okay, so with the, um, with the plan here for each of these units is um, I'm going to do some detail work. Now, I'm not going to be doing antennas because my um, I'm having problems securing the antennas that I need for this project, and that's the Sinclair antennas. So I'm just going to forego it. I do have the battery or the uh, cab signal boxes, so I can put those in. Um, 1645, the, the horn has broken off, so I have to re glue that. So I'm going to get to work doing those details. All right, so the cab signal boxes that I'm putting on, I got off of Shapeways. Um, they're really nice. Uh, they got a little bit of detail to them. I just hand painted them up with a brush and all I got to do is just put a little bit of glue in there and just set them on this right here. Just like that. So they sit forward of the engineer on that side. And here for this one.
Yikes. Okay, so that's our detail work. Um, now the next thing we need to do with these units is if you look here, these handrails here need to be painted white. So I'm going to get set up to get some white paint while the uh, glue sets up on this detail work and uh, so we can paint those handrails. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this white acrylic paint. Um, I like it because it's nice and thick. It's easy for doing the handrails. And I'll use a small little brush. And I'll just come in here and paint the handrails. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to improve operations here, we're going to go ahead and change out the couplers. Really not a fan of the Atlas uh, couplers, so I'm going to use microtrains. Uh, these are 1015s, they're pre-assembled. Uh, getting them pre-assembled is a little more expensive, and, uh, but it makes your life a lot easier. So let me uh, get started. All right, so I got the screw and pulled the old one out. Now I'm going to take the new microtrains couple and put it in. I like to use the same screw that came with the unit. There we go. Now go ahead and do the other end. These Atlas screws are in there really tight, so the foam, the foam cradle isn't working too well. I got to hold it, but if you look, look where I'm placing my fingers on the nose here and on the sides of the cab, so I don't bend all the handrails. So just take your time. And work slow and don't watch where you're grabbing so you don't bend and break the handrails. There we go. That front coupler fought me really hard. I don't know why. But they're in there. Good. All right, let me get the other three done.
All right, so there you go. That's the last one. Key to remember is when you're doing these, don't be afraid to kind of pull it a little and hold it from the outside. They're pretty sturdy. They'll, they'll take a little bit of pulling. And what happens is the box has a tendency to turn the way you're turning the screw, so the, the coupler ends up on an angle like this. Just back the screw out, and you can write it, and it'll be center line with the, uh, the, the shell. So these screws were a little tight coming out. I guess, I don't know, I guess they really tightened them up at the factory. So, all right, so now we got our handrails painted. We got our new couplers installed. We got our cab signal boxes in. Let's get the spray booth set up so we can go over and do some uh, weather. Okay, so one thing I did, uh, I forgot to do when I, uh, right before I was getting the spray booth is I uh, went ahead and darkened in the grills. So I got my airbrush set up with some sand and some alcohol. So we're just going to go through and we're going to give these uh, chassis a light dusting before we do some uh, weathering with the powders.
All right, everyone, so there you go. That's how we did it. Uh, nice little project. It only took a couple hours. Was able to add a couple little details, uh, paint those handrails up, do a nice weathering job, put them all back together, and now they look really good, and they sound really good, and they run not bad, too. Um, so thank you very much, Ben, for taking the time out uh, of your schedule and doing that uh, work for me because I'm very happy with it. Um, as you can see, Ben's very particular about how he lays out the, the stuff. So I didn't want to take anything apart and, uh, you know, to show you guys or anything like that. So, cause I didn't want to mess it up. It's that nice. And, um, that's why consequently I wanted to really wanted to paint the frames and the trucks, but, uh, I didn't want to disassemble all that. So that's why I kind of just covered it up and just give a nice little light spray on there just to kind of weather those trucks. Cause I've found in the past when you keep those trucks assembled and you add the weathering powders that it really makes a mess out of the contact. So I think, uh, the airbrushing works a little better. All right, so now we're gonna put those GP15-1s uh, out to work on the layout. Um, they'll be ready for the next session, so the operators will have some nice weather locomotives. Um, next time on the Locomotive Shop, uh, we're gonna be wrapping it up for 2019 with a very special project, one project that I've been waiting to do, and I think now's a perfect time, and we're gonna wrap it up for the year. So uh, make sure you tune in next time uh, on the Locomotive Shop and uh, see what we're doing. So if you're seeing this video for the first time and you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the channel because we're always producing a lot of great free content for everyone. We'd love to have you following along. If you haven't done so already, please check out our Facebook page and Instagram account because I'm always posting daily updates. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.